What's going on guys? Coming here with a little uh, quarantine cooking video, compliments of Plockman's. Uh, first of all, I want to thank them for this um, very generous uh, mustard gift. Uh, I've already tucked into the stone ground mustard and uh, I'm really looking forward to getting into the rest of these. Um, we're going to put together a dish today that we, um, inspired by a dish that we were doing at the restaurant, uh, prior to the COVID outbreak. Um, now that I'm at home, still craving some of these flavors, um, we're going to make a salad, uh, with a mustard vinaigrette. We're going to use the, uh, endive, excuse me, escarole in place of the endive that we would have been using at the, uh, at the restaurant. We're going to make a bacon mustardy kind of vinaigrette. Uh, we got some candied pecans um, and some ashy cheese as well as the sweet complement of pear. Um, this is a fairly classic combination um, when you think of the Belgian endive salad with uh, blue cheese, pear, uh, pecans and or walnuts, um, and like a mustard vinaigrette, um, where today, since we are limited with product, um, here in quarantine, we're going to take that same idea of the bitter greens, which I've already taken, uh, the liberty of washing and spinning, um, and pair them with those other flavors. So let's get, uh, let's get into it. really cold bacon. You can even uh, go as far as throwing it in the freezer prior to uh, cutting it. And as long as you have a sharp knife, which you should, because sharper is safer, uh, you should have no issues dicing your bacon. So I have uh, three strips of bacon I cut in half and just stacked on top of each other. I'm going fairly small on my dice. Um, the bacon is not the star of this dish or this even this vinaigrette. It's just a little bit of a background flavor. Uh, you could, of course, leave the bacon out um, if you were a vegetarian um, and just go with a, a sort of classic mustard vinaigrette. And I'm going to get that in a pan and start to render the fat. So I'm also going to add a little bit of garlic to this vinaigrette and throw all that bacon already. There's also not too many better aromas in my book better than bacon with onion and garlic. Give this a stir, make sure. Don't burn. It's just like a smash. My garlic before running through it a few times. Uh, traditionally, this wouldn't be a warm vinaigrette. So I'm kind of liking the idea um, since in the Italian cuisines you will see escarole as a cooked green uh, quite often as well. And although I'm not planning on cooking it uh, completely, I think a nice wilt will be nice. I also think the cool, crisp pear will be a nice contrast to the warmer vinaigrette. I'm not use the whole half of the onion, but uh, when I cut onions, I really like um, the trick where I use the layers of the onion to help slice for me. So usually you'll see people show you to cut down and across and then come down this way uh, for a third cut. 
What I like to do is use the layers of the onions as one of my cuts on its own. So what I'm gonna do is just cut this way for my first cut and then go around the hemisphere uh, for my second cut. Uh, this is just one of my little, I'm just gonna use a, about a tablespoon or so. If I had shallots um, or even red onion in, in my apartment right now, I would have chosen that but um, and probably used a little more. But with the uh, onion being so uh, big of a flavor, the white onion, I'm gonna use a little less. Turn off this bacon for a second. Uh, but as you see, I can now just go sort of around the onion and I've already got this nice dice. Excellent. And since we have nicely rendered uh, bacon with quite a bit of fat in there at this point. I'm going to add my garlic and onions to the pan. Turn that to a low heat and sweat that out. So the way we're thinking about this is that the bacon fat itself is our substitute for the oil that you would traditionally use in a vinaigrette. And in this case, um, and many cases, when you make a vinaigrette, you'll use a mustard to emulsify the oil in with the rest of the ingredients. Emulsifications are the suspension of fats in water. Um, and in the case of the vinaigrettes, you'll see them as uh, one solid mass, whereas a broken vinaigrette, you'll see your oil and your vinegar separating out. Um, I'm also going to add a squeeze of uh, lemon juice to this vinaigrette, so I'm going to cut that now. And I'm going to use a very uh, mild vinegar with this uh, rice vinegar today. Uh, but certainly a cider vinegar would work. Um, if you wanted. We're also going to use the stone ground mustard, which I've uh, already tucked into, as I mentioned, and really enjoy. Um, stone ground and Dijon are two of my favorites. And in this case, I like the two different uh, flavors. Mm. Uh, that kind of starts sweet before you get the pungency. Um, the, the combination of Dijon and Stone Ground is going to give me a little extra depth in this vinaigrette. Um, I also like the texture in the Stone Ground, which uh, sort of like the Dijon starts a little bit milder. Um, and then kind of comes a little bit more full force at you towards the end. Mm. Shouldn't get too close, it fogs up my glasses. Can't help it though. Uh, we're just waiting for the onions and the garlic to get a little translucent. Um, in the traditional version of this recipe with the blue cheese, uh, you're kind of getting that funk flavor going on. Um, and since I don't have blue cheese, I did find this ashy, uh, kind of soft as well cheese. We're going to use that to mimic um, a little bit of that aged blue flavor. Um, and while it won't be as pronounced of a, a funk flavor, um, it's definitely going to give us that creaminess and that, that aged sort of sensibility. So I'm going to squeeze half that lemon in here now. I'm going to use about a tablespoon of the stone ground. I'm 
a tablespoon of the Dijon mustard as well. And so I'm also not going to add a ton of this rice vinegar. Um, let's do about a tablespoon of rice vinegar. I want this vinaigrette to be assertive um, and on the acidic side, uh, slightly acidic side. And if you have ever taken the time to look at the ingredients in a mustard, you'll see that vinegar is one of the main components. So I'm not going to um, go overboard on my vinegar in this recipe uh, because our, our mustard is going to provide some of that. So I'm also not going to add any salt or pepper to that. The uh, mustard pecan flavor um, is doing a great job of that for me. And the bacon itself is, is giving me my salt. Um, I had an oil picked out in case I needed to. And you could certainly add a little extra oil if you needed, if your bacon doesn't render out that much. But my bacon gave me a lot of fat, so I'm going to leave that um, aside as well. Um, let's see, next let's just cut the pear. And for me, I want to just quarter it to start. And then we're going to cut out the core by slicing on an angle. And then we're just going to kind of cut in around. So we have some nice slices. And you can tell that way that it is a pear. I don't like to manipulate my food so much that you lose their essence and forget what they are. And of course, you could use any sort of pear that you have the cheese we can do next. Actually, let's get, just add these straight in. cut off the ash. It's not going to hurt you, but we're going to lose um, some of the good part of that flavor. Um, kind of just cut it into some slices just to get it off the block. And then I think we'll just crumble it the rest of the way in large chunks. The nice thing about this salad um, also, uh, aside from how quick it is to make, is that this could be uh, your dinner. Um, you could add a protein to it if you wished. Um, or you could just have it as a side course. I'm just going to add our vinaigrette straight to the bowl. I am going to season the salad now. Also, uh, even though our vinaigrette didn't need the uh, help, the other ingredients certainly would benefit from a little bit of salt and fresh ground black pepper. And that's really it. 
uh, not a difficult salad to make. Um, if you wanted to make it even simpler, uh, I'm sure you could even bake the uh, bacon on a sheet tray and then cut it up in crumbles. If you were nervous about the fat in it, you could drain that off and use extra virgin instead. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and excuse me, but uh, take a bite of this salad. Um, yeah, so the the essence of that original uh, Belgian endive salad is certainly there. Um, the the greens aren't as acidic as a as the uh, Belgian endive would be, uh, but the combination is is great nonetheless. So. Um, that's just one quick, simple way to use up some Plockmans. Um, again, thank you for sending me this. I'm really excited about getting into the rest of this, especially this chili dog mustard. Um, I'm, I'm, I have hot dogs and some buns, and uh, I'm looking to make some, some chili with that as well. Um, so thanks for joining me here um, in Philadelphia in my apartment. Um, hope you're all staying safe. And... Uh, Take care of uh, your loved ones. Make them something good to eat. Thanks, guys.